will be the lead for the design consultancy services DPS uh, dynamic purchasing system soon to be published um, on uh, Public Contracts Scotland. Yeah. Uh, we do hear some feedback. We don't hear the questions quite clear. Um, so if everybody could mute themselves during the presentation and we'll take any questions um, after that, we would really appreciate that. And also, I won't be seeing the questions that you'll be typing while I'm presenting, but my colleague Rona will pick up any questions and hopefully she'll be able to respond um, in the meantime. And if not, we'll just pick up the questions at the end and see if we've missed anything, if that's okay with everybody. So, um, let's just begin. Um, for those who are not familiar with the uh, dynamic purchasing system, um, I'm just going to present the slides. So, it's myself speaking and Rona Mitchell, the property design manager, um, that will be sharing contracts uh, with everybody and the service will be able to publish their own contracts on Public Contracts Scotland, but we'll get to that eventually. Rana will be joining me um, uh, at the end. If you have any questions, feel free to ask her. She'll be more than happy to respond. So, what is a dynamic purchasing system? Um, the DPS, as we shorten it, is an open market solution designed to provide buyers with access to a pool of pre-qualified suppliers, uh, in this case, in respect of building design services. So, uh, when I refer to uh, buyers, I mean the council and any other participating or organizations, because this will, will be a joint procurement exercise. Uh, the benefits of the DPS system is that it is time saving. It's quick and easy access to approved suppliers. Um, the compliance is one of the benefits as well. Um, the confidence that organizations have access to pre-qualified consultants with the right qualifications, the right experience and financial standing to deliver a project. Um, it does ensure best value. It on, only consultants who offer compliance selection responses are pre-qualified, which ensures best value to the buying organizations. Um, it provides choice. Um, access to a wide number of pre-qualified consultants and also local delivery. It offers the opportunity to engage with local suppliers supporting the wider government aim of working with local businesses for economic growth. Um, so what is Design Consultancy Services DPS exactly? For those who weren't familiar with a DPS, it's a procurement solution that offers opportunities for consultants to bid for upcoming design services, referring to the upgrading of uh, refurbishing of buildings such as schools, offices, airports, civils, and even marine, leisure, retail, or civic buildings and council offices. Um, uh, what changes? from the previous procurement exercises. Uh, the council currently procures lower value unregulated um, design consultancy services, uh, and we refer to values between 1,000 pounds and 50,000 uh, pounds through the quick quote process via Public Contracts Scotland. Uh, the DPS system will be able to provide ranked lots um, and all suppliers on a lot will be, will be able to be invited to there. Whereas the moment, uh, at the moment, a distribution list is created by using health and safety approved consultants. Uh, what is the process for tendering after the DPS system goes live? Uh, invitations to tenders will be replaced by mini competitions within each lot, including all suppliers on allotted area via quick quotes process on Public Contracts Scotland. So we'll be using the same system from PCS, only all suppliers within a specific lot will be invited to bid. Um, how does a dynamic purchasing system differ from a, a framework? Well, first of all, there are no restrictions on how long a DPS can now run for. 
Um, mini competitions will be arranged, inviting all suppliers on a lot to bid. Um, so how many suppliers can be part of the DPS uh, list? Um, as many suppliers as pass selection stage. Um, it's open to new suppliers to join at any point, and it encourages new suppliers. Um, it enables new entrants into the market and ultimately inclusion onto any DPS arrangement. Of course, subject to satisfying qualification criteria, which increases competition. Um, suppliers can apply at any time once the DPS is live or enabled. Uh, plus, if some suppliers don't match the selection criteria first, first time around, then they can reapply if unsuccessful, unlike a closed framework arrangement, uh, which only allow, allows uh, the qualified uh, suppliers uh, to be added onto the list. It enables competition through suppliers bidding for opportunities, which can see the public sector organization benefiting from capacity within and across those eligible suppliers on the DPS. It is a faster process uh, than a full tender exercise uh, because a supplier, um, supplier, um, services only be uh, doing the quality and price evaluation instead of having to do the selection evaluation. And it is a streamlined procurement process for buyers and suppliers which may be helpful for new or smaller suppliers. Um, at the moment, um, we are happy to announce that the Council will be able to share the DPS contractor list with other buying organizations willing to participate in this dynamic purchasing system to procure upcoming um, uh, consultancy services. Our confirmed partner so far is Forestry and Land Scotland, but we will be in contact with other authorities before publishing the notice um, and see if anybody else is interested in participating in a joint procurement exercise. So not only will contractors be able to tender for the council's projects, but also for all these public organizations requirements as well. Um, uh, how will the design consultancy services DPS be tendered? Um, as I said previously, the design consultancy uh, services DPS tender will be based on exi existing single procurement document, the SPD that Francis was talking about, um, and gets usually confused with SDP, um, uh, the old European single procurement document, uh, the old ESPD Scotland, which can be found on various sites like Supplier Journey, for example. Um, as a result of the UK's exit from the EU at the ending of the tran trading trans transition period, um, the UK is now using the single procurement document, SPD, instead of the European single procurement document, which was called ESPD. There are only some slight changes between the SPD and the ESPD in terminology, such as removing uh, member states from the document. If your company has previously been involved in property quick quotes, You'll probably be familiar with the selection questions as we have been including some of them in our invitation to tender before, uh, for example, exclu exclusion grounds and insurances. Um, listed in this slide is a link with more information on the selection questions, which will be included in the DPS tender exercise as um, SPD guidance. So if you access that link, you'll find out more information about the uh, SPD document itself that needs to be completed as part of the selection process. Um, about individual call-offs within the DPS. Once the DPS uh, is live, uh, the service will be able to publish their own call-offs. Now, the individual call-offs within the publisher in the DPS will be evaluated on the basis of quality and price to demonstrate best value for the council and for other collaborating public sector uh, buying organization, as uh, previously stated. Given the selection process will already be undergone during the DPS system tender, no selection evaluation will be included at the call-off stage. Uh, the Council is currently considering using the following call-off methodology. 
Um, this is just a proposed uh, methodology at the moment. Um, the most economically advantageous tender with a range of weightings between uh, for quality between 10 and 25% and for price between 90 and 75%, depending on the complexity of the project itself. Individual buying organizations calling off from the DPS would be responsible for the running of their own mini competitions and contract management of the awarded projects. The form of the contract, uh, however, is our proposed is based on our proposed Argyle and Butte terms and conditions. Now, the proposed lotting structure um, looks like this at the moment on the basis of uh, previous contracts that have been awarded by the property services. So the first one they would be interested in is architects, the second one civil engineers, clerk of works, conservation architects, especially for listed buildings, ecological surveyors, geotechnical, kitchen designers, landscape architects, mechanical and electrical engineers, quantity surveyors, uh, raw preservation works surveyors, structural engineers, and topographical surveyors. This lot structure reflects the requirements of the council so far. Um, we have enclosed a number of lots and split them by sublots uh, on proposed project values um, between one pound and ten thousand pounds, and ten thousand pounds and forty nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pounds to meet the requirements of the regulated process for specific lots. Um, we thought that these specific lots, lot 1, lot 8 to lot 10, and lot 12 would require sub sublotting based on the, the level of contract values that we've awarded previously. The rest of them, uh, we were thinking that don't require sublotting because most of the values awarded for the rest of the lots are quite high. Um, so the time scales for publishing uh, the DPS itself, uh, we have already published an RFI uh, request for information uh, pin notice um, on Public Contract Scotland, and it's been published on the 19th. It has a closing date on the 19th of July 2023. Um, and as you all were aware, um, we require um, consultants to provide feedback or suggestions to our proposed terms by noon 19th of July 2023. Um, you have the opportunity to show your interest by then um, and before publishing the contract notice we will develop a sourcing strategy and uh, the ITT documents. Uh, the DPS SPD will be published late July or Provided an estimated budget for the next three years, uh, the property uh, services um, thought to give you an idea of future spend um, to create a table of envisioned budget for call-offs of specific services based on previous contract values the council had in place, which highlights a total spend of average um, one hundred and twenty thousand pounds per year. Um, so, as you can see. The most of the spend uh, goes towards mechanical and electrical engineers, structural engineers, and clerk of works. Um, to give you a proper idea of how the spend is split between lots, we've created this graphic um, so that it's more clear to consultants on what the council looks for normally within a year. Um, of its activity. 
So this is how um, our proposed dynamic purchasing system would work like. Uh, we have included some of the information in the RFI notice itself, in the RFI document uploaded on PCS, and we've requested your feedback and opinion on uh, some of the proposed lotting structure and values. If you would be able to complete that and send it back to myself, my email address is um, mentioned on the notice as well. We would appreciate that very much. Now, this was our presentation. We welcome any questions you may have. Thank you for listening. I hope this presentation has clarified how the DPS actually works. I'm happy to respond to any questions now. Perfect, Mirella, thank you so much. Let's stop the recording there then and we can go to questions.